Hi, I'm Kathy Stark. This lesson is about linear functions. We look at how to graph linear functions and some properties associated with them. To begin with, we're going to define a linear function. A linear function is a function defined by f of x equals ax plus b, where a and b are real numbers. Here's some examples of linear functions. g of x equals 2x minus 3. h of t is 6 plus 1 half t. g of p equals negative 3.76p. The thing that makes these three linear functions is the power on the independent variable is 1. Notice that in g of x, the number 2 represents a, and negative 3 sits where the b would be. The word linear means line-like, which implies that the graph of a linear function is a line. In order to graph a line, we need three points. Let's try an example. What we're going to do is graph the following linear function by hand, and then we will support our answer with the calculator-generated graph. As we work this problem, we're going to give the x-intercept, y-intercept, domain, and range of the function. As I mentioned, we need three points in order to graph a linear function. We can choose any values we like. When the coefficient of x is a fraction, it's to our advantage to choose numbers that are divisible by the denominator of the fraction. Let's fill out the following table, first using 0 for x, then 10 for x, and then we'll use 0 for f of x, which corresponds to y, and solve for x. Starting with 0, I want to know what is f of 0. I substitute 0 for x and simplify. f of 0 is 0 plus 2, which is 2. We can fill 2 into our table. Now let's use 10 for x. I need to know what is f of 10. Substitute 10 for x. To simplify, remember that when you multiply fractions, to consider 10 to be 10 over 1, multiply numerators and denominators. This is negative 20 fifths plus 2, which is negative 4 plus 2, or negative 2. We can fill negative 2 into our table. Now what we're going to do is put 0 for f of x and find the x that corresponds to that. Here we go. 0 is negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Let's begin by subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation, in which case we get negative 2 equals negative 2 fifths x. Since I want x, I'm going to multiply each side of the equation by the reciprocal of negative 2 fifths which is negative 5 over 2. What that leaves on the right-hand side is x. On the left, I need to figure out negative 5 over 2 times negative 2, which I will put over 1. This simplifies to 10 over 2, or 5. So when y, or f of x, is 0, x is 5. Now we have three ordered pairs that we can plot in a coordinate system and connect to get the graph of a line. Here's our coordinate system. We need to plot the points 0, 2, 10, negative 2, and 5, 0. Starting with 0, 2, then positive 10, negative 2, and then the third ordered pair is 5, in the x direction, 0 in the y direction. Connecting these, we end up with the graph of our line. I also want to point out the x-intercept is 5, the y-intercept is positive 2. The domain is all the x's that this line covers from left to right, or all real numbers. The range is all the y's this line covers from bottom to top or all real numbers. Let's support our answer with a graphing calculator graph. What we're going to do is enter the function negative 2 fifths x plus 2. Remember that when you enter a fractional coefficient, that it itself needs to be in parentheses, times x plus 2. 
For this particular line, I'm going to zoom standard and take a look at the graph. This is the graph we found by hand. Notice that the y-intercept is 2, the x-intercept is 5, and the domain and range are both all real numbers. Now it's your turn to try a problem. Stop the tape and graph the following linear function by hand. Try to support your answer with the graphing calculator and find the x-intercept, y-intercept, domain, and range. Let's see how you did. In order to graph the function by hand, we need to find three points that satisfy the equation. These are the three I've chosen. Starting with x equal to 0, I need to find f of 0. Replacing 0 with x, x with 0, excuse me, what we need to find or simplify to get 0 minus 6 or negative 6. Negative 6 goes in the table. To fill in the next spot in the table, I'm going to put 0 for y, or f of x. 0 equals 3x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides to get 6 is equal to 3x. And now divide by 3 to get x is equal to 2. We can put that in our table. The last thing I'm going to use is negative 2 for x. I need to find f of negative 2. That's 3 times negative 2 minus 6, which is negative 6 minus 6, which is negative 12. And I can put negative 12 in the table. I'm ready to plot these ordered pairs in a coordinate system. Making note of them again, they are 0, negative 6, 2, 0, and negative 2, negative 12. Plotting those, I have 0, negative 6. The next one is 2, 0, and the third is negative 2, negative 12. Negative 2, negative 12 is slightly off our grid, but would be approximately there. Drawing a line through these, I get roughly the graph of that line. Notice that the x-intercept is 2, the y-intercept is negative 6. The domain from left to right is all real numbers, the range from bottom to top is all real numbers. Let's move on to another concept involving lines, the slope. The slope is the numerical measure of the steepness of the line. In other words, it's rise over its run. Here's the definition. The slope represented by the letter M of a line through the points x1, y1, and x2, y2 is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's try this out with an example. What we want to do is calculate the slope of the line that contains the points negative 2, 1, and 3, 2. Using the formula, we're going to subtract the y values, in this case I choose to do 2 minus 1, over the difference in the x values, 3 minus negative 2. Simplifying, I get 1 over 5. The slope of the line that contains these two points is 1 fifth. Now, in the formula, there's an x2 and a y2 and an x1 and a y1. I chose to use the second ordered pair as x2, y2, and the first as x1, y1. It doesn't make any difference as long as you're consistent and whatever you use in the numerator you use in the denominator. Now it's your turn to try a problem. Stop the tape and find the slope of the line that passes through the points 8, 4, and negative 1, negative 3. Then restart the tape and check your work. 